If you've been wondering where the GG in the somewhat strange name ggplot came from, the answer is that the GG stands for grammar of graphics. Specifically, this is called a layered grammar of graphics because it explains how plots can be created through layers. If we were to compare the ggplot approach with the conventional plotting approach, we would see that in the conventional approach, you create a plot by having some sort of a function, and that function has a long laundry list of arguments, and those arguments are used to control the plot characteristics, such as what kind of plot markers to use, the color, where the data will come from, whether there should be axes, and so on. In these sorts of functions, a lot of times the plot type itself is controlled either by the nature of the data that you pull into the function or by the name of the function itself. In the case of the generic R plot function, the kind of data, whether each of the factors is continuous or discontinuous, controls whether the plot is going to be a scatter plot or a bar chart or a box and whisker chart or some other kind of chart like that. In ggplot, the plot is created systematically by adding together a series of functions. There's one function to set up the plot itself. Another function gets added onto it to control the geometry of the function. Another function gets added to control the nature of the axes, and so on. So the plot type is not just controlled by the single function, but rather by layering a series of functions on top of each other. And each part of the plot is controlled by specific aesthetic geometry and coordinate functions. To flesh out how this layering works a little bit better, I'm going to talk about a template function that comes from the Wickham and Groleman website, R for Data Science, and also a diagram that explains this quite well. ggplots are constructed systematically by adding together a bunch of different functions. Each function adds information to the basic data function that we start with here. We add information about the geometries, coordinate system, and faceting, if there is any. So one thing to note is that not every plot is going to use every function in this template. This diagram summarizes the process that we would go through to build a plot from a series of functions. We start with the data itself, which is in the basic function here. And we can perform a statistical operation on those data if we want to summarize it, for example, to come up with the counts of the different categories. That would be the stat part here. Then we can choose a geometry of how we're going to represent the data. In this particular case, the geometry that we're choosing is to represent different categories by bars. We can then adjust the aesthetics of this mapping by assigning colors to the different levels of the X factor. We can specify a coordinate system to which this mapping will be made, or we can leave that out and it'll assume a rectangular coordinate system. We can adjust the position of the graph within that coordinate system and if we want to display a number of graphs on the same screen, we can facet and choose how we like those particular different graphs to be displayed next to each other. So by building this up systematically, uh, piece by piece, we can have a general sort of procedure for building any kind of graph by adjusting the different pieces in this template here.